This is version 2 of my hydroponic system which uses a pH sensor, EC sensor, DS18B20, waterproof, one wire digital temperature sensor, the most versatile UART version of the A02WIUWO waterproof ultrasonic sensor, a pair of gravity analog signal isolators, the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module and Blink application. If you have watched the last video, you know I haven't changed anything on the hardware side. Everything looks the same. I made some small changes in the programming and in the Blink application. In version 1 of the hydroponic system, we couldn't change the sensor limits in real time because all the limits were predefined in the code. To change the limits, we had to go into the program and update them each time. But this time, you don't need to change the code. You can change the limits using sliders in the Blink application. The limits you set here will be stored in the ESP32's EEP ROM. So if the controller turns off or resets, the limits you set won't change. This is a very powerful feature, especially for those who want to use this hydroponic system in multiple locations. Everyone can configure the system as they like. Let me show you how. In the Blink application, you can see I have added two tapes. On one tape, I have added widgets for monitoring the water level, pH value, TDS value, and temperature. On the second tape, I have added sliders for setting the limits for those sensors. As you can see, I have already set the lower and upper limits for monitoring the water level. For this demonstration, I'm using this place as a water tank. When the water level goes below the lower limit, this light will turn on. Instead of turning on the light, you can also send a notification message. Similarly, I have set a limit for the pH sensor. Right now, you can see pH value of drinking water. The light is off because the pH value is within the predefined limits. Let's make this water a bit acidic by adding some cold drink. As you can see, the light turned on. If I want this value to be normal, I can change its limit in the Blink application. Now, you can see the light is off, which means everything is normal. Now, it will only notify you when the water becomes too acidic, so let's make the water more acidic. You can see the light turned on again. In version 3, you won't see so much wiring because everything will be plug and play. I have already placed an online order on Next PCB, and once I receive the PCBs, I will share updates with you. To check for errors and manufacturability in your PCB design, you can use Next PCB's online HQ DFM tool or their desktop software, both available absolutely free of cost. When you design PCB through EDA, you know what DRC is and believe it is enough for everything, but the reality is more than that. DRC, DFM, and DFA are totally different concepts. DRC is a design rule. DFM and DFA represent a guideline. The manufacturers are able to produce your design into reality and make sure all circuit and assembly works through the whole product life. From what I can tell, a manufacturer with such a tool means they care for the quality of the products. Additionally, NextPCB provides component sourcing services since they are the largest component distributor in China. And guess what? They offer free PCBs for new customers up to $30. And that's not all. For five PCBs assembly, you can use their assembly services for free if the types of components on your board are 30 or less. By the way, the PCB board I'm currently using, I also manufactured it from Next PCB. Their PCB quality is quite amazing. The edges are burr-free and polished smooth. The weight and texture feel great to my touch. If you also want to order high-quality PCBs or PCB assembly for your projects or prototypes, you can click on the first link in the description. Anyway, if you don't have a development board, you can also do the same exact connections on a breadboard. For connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. Now, let me show you the changes I made in the programming. I added the EEP ROM library. Next, I defined some variables for the limits. Inside the white setup function, I used the EEP ROM dot begin. Next, I added code to read values from these particular addresses in the EEP ROM and assign them to different variables. These addresses will store the values sent from Blink application. The purpose of using these instructions over here is to ensure that when the controller restarts, it reads these stored values from the EEP ROM. For the lower level, upper level, pH limit, TDS limit, 
and temperature limit, I have defined virtual pins V4, V5, V6, V7, and V8. Through these virtual variables, we send the sensor limits from Blink application to the ESP32. Then using eeprom.write and eeprom.commit, we permanently save these limits to the ESP32's memory. After this, you need to use these limits in your program. As you can see, I use the upper level and lower level variables in the MAP function. And I also use the pH limit in a condition. You can do the same for the other sensors. So these are the changes I made on the ESP32 side. Next, log in into your Blink account and create five more data streams for the sensor limits. In the previous video, we created four data streams from V0 to V3. Now, let's start with a Blink IoT application setup. You will need to do everything just the same, but this time you will also need to add tapes to give it a more professional look. On one tape, we will add widgets for monitoring and on the other tape, we will add sliders. If you face any issues, simply pause the video and watch my getting started video on the ESP32 and the new Blink video.
our Blink IoT application has also been updated. Now, with this updated application, we can not only monitor sensors at any time and from any location, but we can also adjust sensor limits according to our preference. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.